Activision, baby, don't worry. He doesn't even know I'm here with you. I'm just enjoying life at the moment. She has Stockholm Syndrome. They never question what you do when they got Stockholm Syndrome. No, it's not like I made an obligation to a bunch of people that subscribe to me or follow me on a social media platform to play a series of bad anime games and making reviews on them for their entertainment and getting mad at it. No, who the fuck would do something like that? Oh, Bandai, honey, uh, what, what are you doing up this late? I, I thought you would be in bed by now. You know, you haven't had a lot of energy since we got released from prison. Oh, what you got there on the plate? Uh, oh, is that oh is that a Sword Art Online game? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to get to them. Don't worry. I'm just taking a sabbatical from anime games. I've, you know, that made it a best game took a lot out of me. I'm just exploring my options. But I, I would never play any other games from any other big corporations that steal money from their customers. Like, like you, honey, sweetie. Oh, do, do, you, do you want me to play that game like right now? Like make a video on that game right now? Like I'll, I'll, I'll do that if you want me to do that. I'll do, okay. I'll, you, let, let's, just, let's go upstairs and make a video on it real quick. It's only right to judge something after you've had your fair share with it, after you've enjoyed it and done what you can with it, without any bias. That is what I tried doing here today. In fact, that is what I did here today. I am flabbergasted a little bit. Now, I know I'm about to grandstand about the Black Clover game again, saying it was such a fucking amazing game for it to just be dead. So, yeah... Yeah, fair, 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 fair. Don't worry. I'm not going to bore you with that same story over and over. Today, we are talking about one of the dreaded series I knew I would eventually have to go through, the Sword Online games. And after a small moment of picking the wrong game to start, I was gracefully reminded in chat, hey, this is the wrong one. You need to go play X. The first is basically Hall of Fame, Lost Song, Hall of Realization. Wait, wait, am I playing the wrong one then? I'm playing the wrong one! Hold on a second. So, I pulled up the game, and obviously, graphics are... It's an older game. In fact, I didn't realize how old this game was. So when I got it off the Steam store, it said it released in 2018. Uh, I'm talking about Sword Art Online re Hollow Fragment. And luckily, that person in chat told me a little bit of lore, so I went and looked up after I played it. Went and looked up the wiki and kind of read about it. And found out that this game was a PSP remake to the PS Vita. It used to be called Infinity Movement. And after it was remade in the Vita, they increased some things. They added some more content. And then it was re-released -re on Steam where they've increased the level cap by uh, 50. They've added tons of new context. Uh, they actually put all of the stuff from Infinity Movement into Rehollow Fragment. So you basically got two games in one. And I know I usually shit on Bandai Namco and yell at them, cuss at them, say the profanities as you, and you all give me likes and thumbs up saying I'm so fucking cool for being the one to stand against the corporate greed of them. But th in this in this instance, I was kind of took it aback because I expected a Sword Art Online game to be terrible. And it wasn't. In fact, it was enjoyable. In fact, it was enjoyable. I can't believe I'm saying this. A Sword Art Online game was enjoyable. Now, there's multiple ways to do Sword Art Online games. There's your hack and slash. There's your hardcore turn-based RPG. But they do a, a, a better system for Sword Art Online, in my opinion on this. The Sword Art Online games play like a kind of more geared fantasy star online which is kind of surprising uh there's tons of content there's tons of characters uh but you know i'm not gonna sit here and suck the dick of the game and every single thing this is going to be a short video it's going to be short to let you know that this is worth the buy it's worth to pick it up enjoy it and you know give bandai namco the small little clap you would in and say okay you you didn't fuck up this time but i'm still hesitant of you so the the good of this game, the great. Let's start with the character customization. Obviously, you're going to be playing Kirito because this is a game based around his whole story. It's when he gets trapped in the virtual moment RPG and he can't come out of it. Otherwise, he might nut. 
to death. Like he might go, he might die. He dies in real life. It's basically what Dot Hack was, just uh, the newer age of it, and uh, more waifus, tons more waifus. So character customization, I thought would be bland. You're playing Kirito. What what could you seriously do? I, I was fucking. I was surprised. Uh, I was surprised. They allowed you to change almost every aspect of Kirito, even to the point where he was a female. You put on out. They had tons of customizations. It made you feel like you were playing an MMO. And then it got to the point where I started playing the game, and then I found out you're not only able to make Kirito into a cross-dressing female with a male voice, you're able to make Kirito use different weapons. Yes, his trademark dual wielding sword that he was only able to use and nobody else because that's not fair in the game. Uh, yeah, he could say, fuck it. You want to play with an axe? Play with an axe. You want to play with a polearm? Play with a polearm. You want to play with a katana? Fuck, do it. Enjoy it. There's skill trees based around all of them. There's builds. There's, it's, it's, it, it's weird. This game from 2014 that was remastered twice has more content and more customization options than most MMOs. It's, it shows you how games have kind of went into the decline. And that's kind of where my anger is placed in this. It's it's a far cry to show that how much effort you had to put in the game in back of the day. Back when they were like 30 to $40. And now with our $70 price tag being dropped on almost everything. Um, yeah, it's refreshing. And uh, a reminder that the good old days are the, exactly that. The good old days, okay? Uh, as for the story, the story itself... It follows two different stories. You have the virtual world story, which is the virtual world inside the virtual world that follows this random girl that I don't remember the name of, but man, she was hot and she was taller than me because I made my Kirito very small. And then you have your character, Kirito, who needs to clear the floors to get out of the game. And uh, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit about uh, what that really entails. But... As for the questing system, there's tons of quests. You have to pick it up from one NPC, and it kind of gets a little annoying. But besides the questing system, there's many events through the world as you're walking through. Enemies can ask you to help, or teammates will ask you to help them hunt certain monsters, do certain quests. Uh, you could join events like in Final Fantasy and just kill certain monsters to level up. It's uh, a lot. It felt like an MMO. Go figure, the game that's about an MMO feels like an MMO. They did it right. They did it really right. Uh, quests are not the craziest thing. Sometimes they have gathering quests. Sometimes they have kill X amount and kill X monster until it drops X thing. That's, that's fine. In fact, the monster variety, it doesn't get boring. And this will lead me into the gameplay. The gameplay itself, like I said, it's a unique system. It plays like Fantasy Star Online, where you have real-time combat, activated skills, and chains that you can do with your party members, but you also can dodge attacks when monsters are powering them up, or they telegraph where they're going to hit. Uh, it's it's crazy to think that something from 2014 had this combat system put in. I'm not going to get too crazy about it. The, the skills were li like I enjoyed them. They were fun to use. They had their own little cutscenes and stuff, and they did. there was a lot of flashing lights and explosions on screen, and big-ass fucking numbers. Uh, leveling is not tedious. It it feels like leveling. Hell, if you want to be a stupid stinker and go to an area with higher monsters, you could sit there and fight one monster, even though it'll take a while, you'll gain XP subsequent to that monster's level, meaning you can power level yourself. Uh, you're not going to be doing it fast, but it would probably be a little bit more beneficial than running, you know, six herbs to this person to get 100 XP versus getting 4,000 XP for fighting this thing for 10 minutes. That leads me into the next thing. The party system. Uh, everybody's fucking here and you can interchange them. That's crazy. I like that. Uh, Cutscenes are, some are animated and some are more text-based stuff. It's, it's an older game. I don't fault them for them. In fact, uh, it, it's all right. It's totally fine. The story, uh, there's a, it, you're playing a Sword Art Online game, so there's a fuck ton of talking. And a lot of it is just dick riding Kirito. So if you don't like that, Take a pass. Now, that leads me into my final thing. The boss floors. Now, when I got to the first boss floor, floor 76, you had to fight the boss monster, which was basically a beholder from Dungeons & Dragons. Now, I thought this would just be your run-of-the-mill, I'm uh, the main character, fight this fucker, and do whatever. But it had me assemble a party of adventurers. They all had their fucking health on screen. And I was kind of confused... 
Because I was like, why the fuck are all these people here? Uh, go figure. You actually maintain how many of them stay alive. They count how many die during the excursion. The fight took a bit. It was a fun fight. You had to pay attention to the boss's reads and stuff. It's just... It was a lot invested in it for it to be a game from 2014. Uh, kudos to the people to putting so much effort into it. I know most of the time I sit here and dick ride hating uh, Bandai Namco, but you got to give them credit where credit is due. It's crazy that a game from 2014 was able to do this, but uh, that's the problem. We're about to still go forward into these these games, these sort of online games, and uh, they can only get worse from here. I, I can imagine a game company taking out features that were great in a previous game and just and then giving you the game at a more expensive price. It happens all the time. So yeah, Sword Art Online Rehollo Fragment. It's $20 on Steam. It's not bad. Also, there's online PvP and co-op. I was unable to do that because I don't have any friend who's going to buy a fuck ton of Sword Art Online games just to play it with me. And obviously, nobody's playing PvP on this game at that time. So, yeah, there's even more content I was unable to access that you could probably access if you and your friend want to pick it up and enjoy a odd-based MMORPG based around Sword Art Online. If you enjoy waifus, you enjoy MMOs, you'll probably get a kick out of this game. So, yeah, small, small little video. It's not going to be much. I'm not going to fault them because I didn't find anything that was time-relevant to hate on this game you know it's it's a good remaster it's a good game it was a good game before games got bad so yeah pick it up and enjoy it i'll see you guys in the next video because we have a whole lot more of these sort of online games to do